Hello, my name is Howard Wimshurst and today I'm going to give you some principles, techniques, tricks to learning fast motion speed in animation. When I was uh, starting out with animation, I basically couldn't get my animations to look like they're going that fast a lot of the time. Some of the animators who I was inspired by who could make things look really fast, it's the same frame rate that I'm using. So it, clearly it's not an issue of frame rate, it's about what they draw in the scene and the timing and spacing and other principles of animation and and that's how they were able to get things to look so fast. The thing that I want you to remember is that animation is an illusion, okay? So when something moves, especially in frame by frame animation, okay? If something moves, that is an illusion. It's not actually moving. Nothing's moving in frame by frame. That's an example. A circle uh, moving across the frame like this, okay? And it looks like it's moving, but it's not. I've actually just drawn a circle here, circle, a different circle here, a different circle here, different circle here, and a different circle here, and just flipped between them. And it's made it look like it's moving, but it's not moving. That's not the same circle in each frame. When you're looking at something, part of it is your brain seeing it for the first time and part of it is like your your brain linking it up to what it already knows is true so it sees something like that as like symbolic and it fills in the gaps with it with the brain's imagination and that's one reason why i really like animation uh, is because it requires a suspension of disbelief uh, from the viewer and it also requires the viewer to use their brain to imagine to sort of fill in the gaps uh, speed is relative. Speed when you're showing speed is relative to what is surrounding it, to its environment. So, in fact, a lot of the time you'll see in movies about you know space travel, you'll see rockets traveling, but you have no concept for how fast they're going because there's nothing nearby, it's just space. You need something to indicate what the speed is. You could then show the asteroids moving past like really slowly. So then it's like, oh, okay, the rocket's just drifting through space or we could have it like just have them zoom by and then you know that the rocket is going really fast. But without them, you don't know because speed is relative. So it's also about everything else in the frame. I don't ever recommend that you just have everything as fast as you can because that's something you can do. Speed in animation works best when it's uh, paired with things that are slow and I'm going to show you a few examples of that with this example This is made by an animator called Kozen. Uh, it's a really interesting animation um, It's Adder's story part two and It stood out to me because of how he plays with with speed in it um, And and for other reasons, but the fact that you know, he will he will have these contrasting scenes where it will just cut from a very slow scene to a very fast pace like wow what's going on like so crazy um so i just wanted to show you a bit of that So that should be enough of an example, but you can see that there's like, you know, there's a lot of takes which just take their time and they're, they're quite long and they just allow you to sort of take in what's happening. And then there are other shots which are just, it's like chaos. 
Um, and it's a, it's a nice duality to play with. The chaotic scenes make the still scenes stand out as being very still and very serene, calm and peaceful. And then uh, the opposite occurs as well. Use it wisely, I'd say. You know, so, sometimes if you just use the speed, like if you make something look really fast, and you just use it sparingly, it will make those parts stand out. And of course, I also recommend that you only make something look fast when it's important in the story. Speed equals distance divided by time. The general principle that we're going by here, the less time you have, uh, the less frames you have, the faster the speed, or the more distance it travels in that time, the faster the speed. So you have got two different axes there to alter the speed of anything uh, that you're working with, or the velo you might want to call it the velocity. You can either take frames out and that will just get the same distance travelled but in less time, or you can just increase the distance that it travels in that time. I would recommend if you're looking to make a piece of animation, like add some speed to it, just experiment with taking out some of the frames at different points, if, especially if you've got it on twos or something, then try taking out that extra frame and putting it onto one. I've got open here a an animation that I'm just sort of working on called Surviving the Fall. I guess I can take this part. This is... So this is a part where he's f sort of swinging through on a rope. I've already done a lot of changes to the timing to make it like this because what I wanted was, uh, like I said before, you're going to have slow mixed with fast. So in any movement, really, you're going to want to sort of contrast them. So we have a small burst of speed here as he's falling and he's sort of accelerating towards the ground. And then he's caught by this, which slows him down. And then it goes a bit faster and then and then this part so if I wanted to make the thing look faster I would actually kind of leave the slow parts alone and just go for the um, the the fast bits like this part so you can see me scrubbing through I can go I can go fast here slow and then fast again like that uh, but really what I would do is I would just, okay, this part, all right, let's take that frame and remove that and take this one, remove that. And now it's going to be faster in that part, just marginally. I just did it slightly, but you could do it drastically or whatever you want, really. That's not the only trick, but that's a good place to start. And that will literally make it faster. But usually that's not the problem because it's quite easy to make an animation fast, okay? Because you just, you know, you draw, you put less frames in. Quite easy, quite simple. Um, what's difficult is keeping the audience informed of that speed. So it's not good enough that something can travel very fast. It, it has to be demonstrated to whoever's watching. Um, so the rest of the tricks are mostly they're techniques for getting the audience to sort of witness or, or get a feel for that speed um, so that they believe it, so it's a believable thing. Anticipation and follow through are really important as well. It's if you're starting or ending a movement, this is an opportunity for you to show, to demonstrate the speed of something. Uh, so if you're trying to get your motions feeling very visceral, feeling very fast, Anticipation and follow through are your key opportunities to do that. So the anticipation is actually before, let's say your character is going to run a race, a 100 meter sprint. The anticipation would be sort of like before they are in full sprint mode going there, it would be then on the tracks, uh, you know, down before the whistle. And then as the, uh, or the gun, as the gun pops, it would be them like sort of tearing at that tarmac launching themselves off that's your key opportunity there and the follow-through or well let's say if it's just a step or like a leap of something 
like a fast leap. The follow through would be once they've landed and then you can show the impact, you can show dust fly up, you can show them maybe they crash roll or something. There's loads of opportunity there to demonstrate. In fact, there's way more opportunity a lot of the time in the anticipation and the follow through, the animation that you do there, than there is opportunity during the actual movement. In this piece of animation, I have, this is another work in progress that I'm doing and here he kind of does a backhand swing of the sword and you'll notice that I, I don't actually do much of anything in the actual frame of the animation it's all in the anticipation and follow through uh, I sort of loaded the anticipation up loaded the follow through up and then the actual frame of it moving itself there's nothing there so you see and that ind just indicates that it's really fast because there's no there's no hanging about. You see here, we're still, if we go through it, we're still in the anticipation phase here. The sword is so bent back, the wrist is leading. And then it's already kind of there. So we just skipped out the actual frame of it in motion altogether. And now it's just, there's a slight there's a slight sort of uh, follow through there, but not really because I wanted to demonstrate that he has such control that he's able to just stop it, even though it's going really fast. Okay, the other thing is uh, there are kind of two types of movement in animation or in film in general. There's screen movement and there's spatial movement. And these are two phrases that I, I kind of coined myself, I don't know if it's actually called spatial movement, um, but here if you imagine this this symbolizes sort of a dot, an object moving literally across the screen. So in relation to the screen, the box that we're viewing this from, the object is in motion going across and often it's important to see from that, as, as a director, you you have to see what's happening with your screen movement, and that is spatial movement. And this is just the other. It's not really a trick. It's the it's the other principle. So screen movement is just just what it's moving on the screen, and spatial movement is in the space or the perceived space that we're, the animation is set in. Where is it moving? Here, you could have the ground rushing by. Yeah, to the to this side, but this object is just in the middle. But like we said earlier, speed is relative. It's relative to your surroundings. So even though the the object in the middle is not moving on the screen, because everything is rushing past, we know that it's moving this way across the ground. Okay. So, I mean, I think a lot of you will know this stuff, but have not, you, you wouldn't have uh, like actively thought of it. You, you'll just know it instinctively. But it, I think it's good to become aware of what you're using to do these things. This has loads of implications, screen movement and spatial movement, and it's important to recognize them. Often I use a combination of both. So uh, going back to this example, I've got, Okay, so here I've I've got mostly a combination of screen uh, screen movement and spatial movement here. So here we've got the camera moving across, but we've also got her moving slightly from from left to right. Okay, and I'll explain why I I have this combination of both. Here I've got more of a spatial movement than the screen movement because this is they're basically in the same place in the screen here this arm it's as if the camera is attached to the body so you can see the arm so all i've done is just put these streaks in the background and then you know that he's falling he's sort of falling to the earth as he's deploying this device um and you just know that from from these streaks uh 
Okay, so why I usually mix them up or, or you know, I don't use a lot of screen movement exclusively by itself. I would never actually do this work going from, uh, you know, one corner to another corner. Is because it takes more work for the viewer's eye to keep track of something that's actually moving across the screen okay so I, I tend to favor this spatial movement quite a lot and um, but despite that I see animators using just screen movement which I think is quite limiting um, so yeah so the viewer the the, the eyes of the viewer actually have to like track this object as it moves around the frame and that's quite that can be quite difficult it can be quite disorienting um, this one the viewer can actually has the opportunity to sort of if this was bigger the viewer would be able to uh, like focus on certain parts of it they might be able to observe like oh what's this what you know they can move their eyes around Whereas this one is, they're just struggling to keep track of this thing. Now, not only that, but this spatial movement, when you've got the camera like following your target, um, it also creates a more intense feeling. Now, the reason for that, if I go to a shot like this, I want to actually um, show you. Uh, okay, so compared to this shot, this shot is where we've got, if you take out the, the camera movement and you just focus on these two figures, all right? So these two figures are moving like that, if we had a still screen. Now, how much of this frame is, is moving? Or is perceived to be moving? A tiny amount, only these two. That's the only two things that are moving in the shot. So that's not very overwhelming. But then this one, you've got, you know, uh, okay, so down here, this isn't really moving that much, but the rest of the frame is all in motion. Everything's rushing towards you. And so as an audience member seeing that, uh, it creates a very powerful effect on you. So the fact that the camera is moving with us, uh, with him, through there, it's like, it's, you feel it a lot more. You feel the rush, the sensation. I'd say, think about spatial movement more, but also just, just pay attention to screen movement. So I talked a bit about camera movement. I'll just say that, you know, with certain lenses, uh, focal lengths, um, by the way, focal length still applies in animation. It's not just for live action. There are a few videos which explain focal length very well and different camera lenses, but essentially they have different effects when telling a story. Now, this would be kind of like an example of a wide angle lens. You can see more around you. Now, if you're using a wide angle sort of look, when you move that through something, it makes everything feel like it's like coming out at you and it's really intense and it's cool. So maybe you want to use that. Um, and with this one, this is like a more of a telephoto lens where everything is kind of squashed flat. And for this one, um, it's harder to like move it around as much. But really, if you're if you're doing this thing where you're moving the camera about uh, by the way, I do have a tutorial on how to create 3D camera movement in Flash. Look on my channel. Um, then adopting a sort of wide angle lens approach uh, should give it more intensity, if intensity is something you're going for, which I think it will be. I couldn't talk about speed without at least mentioning red line. It's, a, it's really fascinating the different sort of things they employ to get this idea of like massive over exaggerated speed so i had to show this clip at least um where they've used this sort of lens hyper distortion effect to get this 
stretching out of the materials. Uh, so if we look at this frame by frame, it's just magnificent how it, it's done. And every now and then I did notice that it just sort of pauses and shifts like that. But that's not something that when you play it through, the effect of that is this is it is the camera shake It's this things sort of going over the rocky ground. But as we pull in, it's sort of, you know, everything is just stretched out. It, it feels like this area here is just in the distance. Um, th I think this would be an example of like a, a, an ultra wide lens that doesn't actually exist. Another reason why animation is like such an amazing thing is that you couldn't possibly make something like this really in, in, in real life uh, or it would be very difficult to, but in animation you can draw it and you can make it real. It's almost liquid how it's stretching out and then we pull right into his face and you see his arms and everything is just really distorted. The only thing that's not really is the, is the face. And we, we get the feeling like we're really close to him here and like his, his arm is, is a landscape of its own. It's a fascinating effect. And we got the camera shake still built in to it, giving it more intensity. All of these lines here in the background are all horizontal. Just, you know, everything is horizontal. And we've got the, you know, the tilts uh, to make it even more dynamic. It's tilted back, so we're sort of sat back in our seats as we're looking at it. A lot like how he is getting pushed to the back of his seat. If you've ever been in a sports car, you'll know that when the accelerator, when you step on the accelerator, you, you, you physically feel like you're forced into the back of your seat where you can't move. It's, it's, it's great at capturing that at normal speed. Did you see how it sort of, it jumps inwards? It's kind of uneven in how it does it. I really feel like that works actually. Lots of camera shake, lots of intensity. All of this is horizontal lines, uh, but also put on a Dutch tilt for added dynamics. Um, loads of dust and things, all implying that there is a lot of energy and force. Um, the designs themselves are also extremely uh, dynamic. Like the car design is, is a very, it's a very fast design. The way he's designed with his hair and everything is kind of, it implies speed in, in its very design. Yeah, I really like that clip. Um, another real quick suggestion is just, if you're finding it hard to make something look convincingly fast, try drawing, drawing with fast strokes. Um, you'll find that everything starts to kind of look like it's got more energy in it. So. I know it's not really an animation technique, but it, it, it's more of like just a, a drawing technique. But um, when you're putting these energy in, like I actually like use the lines, like you know, draw them really fast and scribble like with a lot of energy. That energy gets captured in the drawing. So this one, I'm, I, I was deliberately trying to be as slow as possible, and you can see it's kind of static. Now when I drew it again with this one. Not only did I did it feel more uh, fast just with the the sort of style of the lines, but also I actually drew it differently. I structured it differently to how I drew it in this one because of the way I was drawing it with fast lines, and it just looked more dynamic and faster. So now we're getting onto other things. So these are extra indicators for speed. So, um, like I said before, you've got to demonstrate the power, got to demonstrate the speed to the audience. It's not enough to just, you know, animate it going at a fast speed. You have to demonstrate it. Um, so, these are a bunch of ways you can. Particles, uh, dust, rocks, water, if it's near water, trees and plants, paper, vapor trails. These are all things that are sort of affected, uh, you know, things in your environment which give a sort of telltale sign that something is moving with a lot of speed or energy. So yeah, I try throwing in some dust, you know, putting, put some dust on the floor. 
I remember I used to love badminton. I, I still do. And I went to the Olympic Games badminton tournament and I would see that one of the really good players, he would put chalk on his hands to give him better grip uh, with the badminton. And so when he would smash, there would be this sort of poof of chalk dust coming from his racket. And it looked amazing, it looked like, but it made his smash look like 10 times more powerful and fast than all the other badminton players. So it really does make a big difference. You know, you've got to go out and observe how these materials behave for yourself. And these are extra tips and, and methods for fast motion, which are kind of like a, a standard toolkit for any animator. Uh, you've got speed blurs, you know, he would have these sort of blurs which are sort of pointing back to where he was previously. I've, I've been using them a lot in this, uh, in this one for the sword, so as you can see, I apply a few of the things here, just because the sword does, you know, at the tip of the sword, it swings around quite fast. So I put these blurs, uh, this was my own kind of signature type of blur. Um, and then here, I put the other one. So, where is that? Extra tips. Uh, multiples. I call them multiples on a single frame. I don't actually know the name for them. I'm sure they have a different name. But yeah, I call them multiples. So this is where you're basically drawing like a ghost of where the previous, uh, where it would have been previously. I do it here as well, you know, as it's swinging, I'm just putting the ghost of uh, where it had been along with the blur it, it works really well if you use it in conjunction with blurs um, and also you can use uh, smears so smears is kind of like when you stretch out the object and I would save those um, those methods particularly for when something's move something's actually moving at its fastest so don't do it in as much in the anticipation or the follow through, just when it's moving really fast on those few frames where it will be moving fast. Um, directional speed lines, this is like pretty common in anime and stuff, they just want to ramp up the intensity so they'll, if, if, uh, if you're moving, let's say you're moving upwards, they'll put these sort of, uh, they'll just have faintly these sort of, uh, wait, these upwards sort of, Things. I, I have my own method of doing it where I, I kind of group them together like this so they make little nice little shapes um, and I find that that's that just makes it a little bit more pleasing than if you have like a, an equal scattering like that I think it looks more pleasing when you have it in these um, clusters and it also sort of mimics the effect of wind or like you know other substances if you have them um, clustered together like this um, intensity lines are a bit like that but they're just a there's a slight variation and um, they don't really have a direction all the time they usually just are kind of directed outwards so if someone's like doing let's say someone's like someone's here and they're um, you know they're, they're doing some kind of cool trick with a weapon Maybe they're not moving that much, they're, they're in a static place, but this could be like whipping around and stuff. You could have like intensity lines which just sort of whole thing feel a lot more intense. Um, I don't know, it's, it's a very common anime trick, I don't really use it. Uh, camera shake, this is, uh, this is used a lot in like everything and in fact Camera shake can sometimes slip under the radar and just work subliminally on you. Like sometimes camera shake is not even noticeable, but it just adds so much impact when it's used. So, you know, think about when you want to use camera shake and it can it can it can really bring things to life if you've got something that needs that extra intensity. And also keep in mind that you'll have to if this is your frame and you're doing camera shake, you're gonna to need to draw everything out past that to accommodate for the camera shake. So you're gonna to need to draw it outside of that as well. 
Um, and lastly, sound effects. Now, sound effects are like actually really important for um, communicating speed of something. If some, if you want something to be shown it going really fast, think about what kind of sound effects you you want to use. Um, you know, a good sound effect, a powerful sound effect, put in the right place for the right action will really just take it up a notch and uh, will convince, it's a, again, it's all about convincing the viewer that what they're seeing really is, the real deal really is fast. Um, and that will really sell it to them. Uh, this is very inspired by just me observing all the different methods that animators have used over the years to convey speed. I've done a lot of research and I'm gonna show you a few examples, but um, be inventive and create new ideas. Now, this is like one of the best things you can do for it. And also, I don't mean just be inventive with how you draw your animation. I also mean with story, with little descriptions of things. You can make these descriptions really like, you know, make it unique, but also blow people away with it. So here are a few examples of like how you could write into a story how fast something is. So he was so fast, his shoes caught fire. That little extra detail of the fact that his shoes here have like caught fire from them just going so fast. Something like that is like, it's very effective. The boat was so fast it barely touched the water. If you see a speedboat, they like raise their hull so that hardly any of it is touching the water and they just skim along the top. So like a little detail like that where it's just barely touching the water and you know you can exaggerate that and have it just like with <laughs> like a centimeter of the hull in the water. If you exaggerate that you really um, demonstrate the point that it's going extremely fast. Um, or he spun so fast he looked like a spinning top. So if, you know, with animation you're able to do these kind of things, you can just, you you write the rules and you sort of, you can push reality. So with this, I, you know, I imagine that someone could spin so fast that like, you know, they literally transform into a spinning top. It's a great way to um, communicate that. So, um, I actually really like to study Naruto when it comes to studying speed because they've done a few things that I, I think are very inventive with their you know uh, display of very fast motion they've got some characters in here broccoli is like a great character and he's very you know his thing is that he's very fast so that gives them a lot of room to play about with these extreme effects and these ideas that they have and how to convey that it's a great idea. He takes off these weights, these leg weights, um, to make him go faster. And as you can see, when he drops them, he realizes, okay, they're really, really heavy leg weights. So then, I, I just thought that was a really inventive way in, in the story and like how you tell it, these extra details where it's like, you know, that's a great idea making something a bit out of the ordinary. They use heavy blurs. If we just slow this down and see what's happening, we've got this uh, nice sort of uh, camera movement around and it's quite slow and smooth, but in the meantime, we've got him just zipping around everywhere. And you only see, as you can see here, you only see flashes of him. So you see him, maybe a blur there, and then you just got this very faint, sort of blurred version of him as he's making his way around so fast that he can't really be seen but yeah I, I really suggest uh, I really suggest watching this uh, this fight scene and breaking it down and seeing what kind of methods they use to uh, explain you know the speed and, and show the speed uh, you can see here they do some pretty inventive stuff with their line work um, and just with the design of what that kind of move looks like. Um, it, now, uh, one of the geniuses behind Naruto's amazing animation in certain scenes 
uh, is, uh, to my knowledge, <laughs> is a guy called N Norio Matsumoto. And uh, I, he stands out to me as being particularly inventive with some of the techniques he uses. Um, and I, I just love this scene in uh, the in Naruto in the tuning exam with uh, Sasuke and versus Orochimaru. So if we look, he just straight out the box, he's using these amazing techniques that are very inventive. So if we see here, we've got this uh, continually stretching face. So the, the face, you know, it starts off uh, normally proportions and then as we as the speed steps up it just gets more and more distorted and stretched by that great idea and uh, this actually fits with the character as well because it's a very kind of stretchy body character um, and then I love this part you see how he, just then he zips zips around really fast and this this trail of dust has like has trouble keeping up with him he's already off the frame and this dust hasn't even begun to follow him around. I just thought that was an amazing idea. Um, and the camera as well, the camera has missed him. He goes round and then the camera f finally follows the dust. Um, and But that's just a warm up, okay? So this next shot is really where it's just like, oh my gosh. So look at the frames of how stretchy this is and how he's just able to weave in and out like he's a piece of rope or something. Uh, sort of knotting his way through these branches. So I really liked breaking this down and seeing what was going on here because when you speed that up and look at it, it does look really fast and like like a whip, like it's whipping around like like that is seriously fast when you see that sped up in, in the normal speed. Very inventive, very interesting. And lastly, I just want to say that like you've got to be disciplined with some of this stuff. So um, the audience needs to be able to keep up with what's happening. So just keep that in mind. Um, so if you're making things, I know some people like they want to make things that are really fast, especially in like fight scenes. They want to push the boundaries and make things as fast as they possibly can. Now, don't do that at the expense of your audience. Okay, it only works if the person watching is able to keep up with it all. So if you're cutting too fast or if you're, you know, uh, if you're speeding up the animation, taking more frames out and the audience is like, what just happened? I don't get it. Then you've gone too far. And uh, hopefully this can like just give you a few more tools in your animators toolbox. If you want to see more videos, if you want to get more resources, um, go to animatorguild.com. Check the links in the description. I leave all of this information in the description for you. Just go through, have a read, see what you would like to, if you would like to visit any of my websites, have a look. And if you like to leave a comment, I always appreciate people leaving comments. If you have any questions, any recommendations, new tutorials you'd like. Thank you. See you later.